Hi, this is Phil Caveney back again, and I'm going to do a little bit of a test now. I'm, I'm moving to a different format. I'm a senior reviewer for Midwest Book Review, and it's good for Midwest Book Review and for me if we support each other. And I have nothing but good to say for my friend James Andrew Cox, who I've now known for 43 or 44 years, and he's certainly one of the most decent and civic-minded individuals I've ever made. So he asked me to do something which I thought was sort of annoying and demanding, but uh, it turns out that it's good for me too. So it's a win-win as Nash Equilibrium idea goes in that both people sort of feel a little bit like they were, I won't say cheated, but everybody gets some of what they want. About three months ago, I got into a line of inquiry because I'm very interested in foreign policy. And the thing that I'm most afraid of is a nuclear war. As a young man, I was a nuclear weapons analyst trainee, so I know what I'm talking about. But I remember a TV show, uh, something I was watching on YouTube, and they were critiquing Trump for cooperating with Putin. And they said that Putin, in his foreign policy, was using something called prospect theory. Now, I knew nothing whatsoever about prospect theory, and I had to, I had to repeat it several times to write it down, because I am dyslexic. But I found it. And what I did was I stumbled into a whole realm of economic analysis in which people make decisions on incomplete information. And that led me into sort of like you'd bet on a poker hand, exactly like you don't know what the outcome is going to be so when you make the decision, your decision is only a probab probabilistic way of being successful. So that got me into, as I studied prospect theory, I got into the works of Dan, Danny Kahneman, who I had never heard of, who was a 2002 Nobel winning economist who introduced the idea of behavioral economics to economic analysis. And one of the things that he really did that's very important is he talked about how we make decisions and how we're not the coldly, rationally calculating, profit-optimizing individuals that we talk about in economic analysis. And Kahneman was famous for, for introducing this idea of type one and type two cognitive processing. Now, type one is the kind of things you do almost without thinking. You'll, you'll drive a car, you might play a five minute chess game. You would, you would not put much cognitive energy into what you're doing. And what he was saying is that that's not a good way to make decisions because you're not using your full cognitive processing ability to think about the implications that might happen uh, for, for, for decision you're making. And I thought about that, and it seemed really interesting because this is sort of a measurable, documentable, scientific way of looking at things. And it solved a lot of problems for me because it explained how individuals might be in what they call a cognitive illusion. And a cognitive, a cognitive illusion means basically you only look for the information that would support your particular bias. So 
I, I have complex issues with the Trump presidency, which I have gone into, and he may be impeached. But nevertheless, there are some, some things about foreign policy that he does, which I'm actually more comfortable with than I might be with the Demo Democrats, because I'm afraid of nuclear war. Well, as I started to follow this field, field of, uh, of behavioral economics, uh, I got into Malcolm Gladwell, and Malcolm Gladwell writes about intuition. He's a public intellectual. Uh, one of the things, one of his, his first book was Blink, and that's where he would analyze how we would make decisions quick. In the, an expert might do that in the blink of an eye. And he dialogue then, dialogues with Daniel Kahneman, who says, well, that appears to be a good way to do things, but is it really? Because as you look at things, the, the, the picture may be a great deal more complex than you want it to be, and you might in fact be operationalizing your own cognitive bias. You, you would, you know, like, like let's, let's say in the election, I think, well, instead of thinking, well, Trump is wickedly smart, he's using the Democrats against themselves, we have to be really careful with this guy. He and Hitler are both great speech makers. But we didn't say that. We said, oh, he's stupid. He'll never be president. Obama even publicly humiliated him at a dinner. Nice going, Barack, and now we got Trump for president. Well, what I mean to say is that those kind of cognitive illusions that Danny Kahneman talks about are part of our lives, and we've got, we've got to think about them. Uh, I'm, I, I don't want to lose this one book. Uh, it's, uh, of all these, of all these uh, behavioral economic, economists that, uh, oh, I, I got it, uh, that I studied, uh, uh, Richard Thaler and some of the other intellectuals, the person that most affected my life, her name is Annie Duke. And I hope this video gets to her because she's helped me make some really important decisions. She is a behavioral, a, co a cognitive scientist herself. She didn't finish her PhD because of illness. Uh, she is a world-class poker player. And as I was studying prospect theory, I stumbled on her. And I see this very bright young woman. And she's saying, well, she, uh, she talked to some famous investor about, about prospect theory and strategy as far as investment. And the guy said, Tragedy, strategy, strategy. The worst thing you can have is think you've got a winning strategy when you've got a losing strategy. And do everything you can to support the idea that in fact you're a winner and you just, things didn't work out. Well, I've gotten to this thing about thinking in bets, making smarter decisions when you don't have all the facts. And our life is so much like that. Uh, she has a wonderful anecdotal way of talking. She talks about how she, after she became ill, before she could finish her, her dissertation, she had to make a living someplace, some way. Her brother was a very good chess, pl chess player and became a world-class poker player. So she was kind of the little girl that hung around the poker players, and he would bring her out for vacation. But then she said she started talking to these people, because she too was a pretty good amateur poker player. And they said to her, well, if you want to talk poker, we'll talk poker with you. But if you just want to whine about things, we all do that. So let's talk about what really happened. I thought, boy. Isn't that something? The other thing that she told me that I've learned, it's taken me a long time to realize this, because I've spent a lifetime being a bad loser full of missed opportunities and sad stories. <laughs> and so, but she said, you know, 
you can you, sometimes you just have to just you have to separate the decision from the result. And she uses a she uses a a play from the 2015 Super Bowl, which is amazing. Richard Thayer uses talks about football. These are sports people. They talk my language, and apparently the Seahawk coach called for a pass as the Seahawks were on the Patriots' four-yard four line. And the, if, if the Seahawks cross the line, they're going to win. But, it, but they got intercepted. And so the Patriots won another Super Bowl. And the media just jumped all over the coach, saying he would made the worst decision possible. All he had to do was this and this and this and their Super Bowl champion. But she shows how, in fact, it was a pretty good decision, but it was just bad luck. You know, one in 50 times, you're going to have bad luck. And that was the 50th time. It doesn't make the decision any worse. You know, the decision itself can be good. And I've done a lot of things like that. I've had a lot of doors slammed in my face academically. I'm an outsider. I'm on the edge of things. I've got a lot of degrees and such. But people don't answer my emails. But she told, she suggested a way of approaching people with power that can help you. And that's to ask them an intelligent question that's so interesting that they can't really refuse it. There's an image from that in the film Blade Runner, which in a longer talk I'm going to elaborate on. But basically, I have done this now twice in my life in the last week. I just got off the phone with somebody who may be able to help me back in the academic world because I didn't look at my past decisions as necessarily mistakes and hate myself for them, but to say, well, I did a couple things that were suggested by reading this book. And I may be in the process of getting back in the academic game myself. Thanks so much and don't forget to like and subscribe and support.